So let's take a look at an example of how we can use these groups in a mixdown session. So let's take a channel 1 to 8 and instead of routing that to the main bus, we're going to be routing that to group 1 2 which is a stereo group. On this SSL we don't have the group faders or else we would be able to send that group to the mix bus from there, which is commonly found. On this particular console the groups are directly connected to their physical output, but they do have a knob to control the volume of the output, for each group that is. So we could now physically connect the output of group 1 and 2 and connect that to two available channels on our console again. Let's use uh, channel 23 and 24 for that. So channel 23 now contains all of the left information of the group 1 and 2 and channel 24 contains all the right information of that group. From here we can send the channel 23 and 24 to the mix bus and we have the drums back into the mix. We gotta make sure that we pan 23 all the way to the left and 24 all the way to the right to have them back into their stereo image. So now that we've seen the channel strip, let's take a look at the master section. In the master section we control the mix and this is basically the heart of the console. Here we can control things like the master fader. We've got a mono switch which allows us to sum our left right bus into a mono mix which is uh, really helpful to check any phase problems. And we can control the group channels, we can control the effect sense or the auxiliary sense and we can control the monitor level. And we can set the source for the monitor level. It also usually allows us to uh, use external things like for example a CD player which can be really helpful to play some reference music while mixing. We'll usually find a talkback section which uh, allows us to plug in a microphone to talk back over the headphone mix so uh, the musicians in the other room can hear us from there. And we can usually find a couple of tools there like for example an oscillator. This particular SSL model does not have a dynamic section on each of the individual channels. Instead it only has two dynamics which we can uh, assign to any channel. This dynamic section uh, has an expander gate and a compressor and we can assign that to uh, any of the channels that we have on the board. And this brings me back to one other complexity that this console has. Looking at the channel strip and all of the modules that we'll find on there, we uh, basically have a uh, dynamic section which we can assign to it, we have an equalizer and we have an insert point. But as we've seen in uh, earlier tutorials, the order in which these processes take place is really important. And this console actually allows us to put the insert point before or after the EQ or put the dynamics before or after the EQ. So this allows us to do some really complex routing which means that there's a lot of wiring going on inside this console to actually make this possible. As you can imagine a $200 mixer won't have all these capabilities and all these cool features that a console of this size has. So now let's take a look at some complex routing stuff of uh, how we're going to be running our signal through this board. And let's just start off with a regular recording setup. We can also visualize a audio interface instead of a tape machine, so let's use that. So to use the full capacity of this mixing board, we need to be able to at least record 24 tracks, preferably at the same time. This means uh, we need to get a 24 track tape machine or we need to get audio interfaces uh, which allows us to connect 24 different inputs to. So we probably want to be recording the direct outs from each channel. This would mean we would have to get behind the board constantly to connect and patch all the different incoming and outgoing signals. But instead of doing that we usually use a patch bay and the patch bay allows us to route all the different in and outputs that we have in the studio to that patch bay which allows us to just easily connect all the different channels with uh, patch cables instead of going behind the console and behind our gear. I'm not going to be drawing the patch bay into the situations that I'm going to be creating right now to keep it a little bit simpler to understand. So we're going to be connecting the direct outputs from each channel to the inputs of our recording device. We're going to be plugging in some microphones for the band that we're going to be recording and these are going to go into the microphone inputs onto the console. So these signals now will be outputted into our recording device over the direct outputs of each channel. We'll be feeding the output of the recording device back into the console over the line connection. We tried to record at an optimum level so we need to do some mic checks. If we record tracks too soft it means that we have to uh, amplify them a lot during mixing and this will uh, bring up the noise. 
If we record sounds too loud, we get the risk of clipping and overdriving. So before going into the recording device, we try to get our signal at an optimum recording level. I try to do the most of the work with the gain knob and I try to keep the faders at zero if possible. When we are actually recording, it is wise to monitor the level and the signal which comes from the recorder back into the console so we can see if it's been recorded properly. We're then actually monitoring the line levels which come back from a recording device. The most asked question from behind a mixing console is, why don't I hear any sound? When all the cables are connected properly, there's a small checklist of things that we can check why there's no sound. The first is to check the metering on the channels to see if there's actual signal coming into these channels. A quick check to see if we're working on the instrument input or on the microphone input. Then we need to check if the fader is up. And if the fader is up, is the channel not flipped? Is the channel microphone preamps gain already open? Or in a mix situation, is the line level uh, already open? If we're working with a condenser microphone, is the microphone powered? Perhaps we have an insert on the channel which is turned off. Are we actually sending this channel to the mix bus? Then we're gonna head over to the monitor section. Also good to check if the speakers or monitors are actually on. Then we're gonna check if the monitors are actually listening to the mix bus. Is the master fader up? Is the control room volume actually up? As you can see, there's uh, quite a big checklist before we can actually get sound out of, uh, out of a console like that. And therefore it's really useful to know the signal flow of a console. So this was it for today. I hope you've uh, enjoyed it. I'm definitely going to be looking at some more mixing consoles in the next episode, but I hope you've learned something today. As always, this was uh, Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials. If you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you all soon. Peace!